I'm here with Elias Karamanis from Germany. What are you doing here? <laughs> hey, I'm playing the calling. I mean, I try to. <laughs> I gotta buy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else uh, can play, and uh, we are sitting here. <laughs> yeah. So your opponent uh, didn't show up. No. Yeah. No. I mean, maybe not. I don't know. Okay. There might be a uneven number, an even, uh, an ah, odd number of yeah. players, right? And, uh, and this is the first time that this happened to you. Yes. So first time. we have how many? How many players are in the game? Today? I don't know, like 800 or so. Yeah. A lot of players. It's the biggest calling so far. So, and you are the one player that didn't get opponent the first yes. round. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It's fine. So we have time to do a deck profile for exactly Oldham. For your Oldham, yeah. Yep. So let's start with your equipment. Yeah. So I mean, basically, Oldham is like a somewhat defensive hero, right? As you guys know, um, they are. His good hammer got banned, so now we're playing Titan's Fist and a lot of uh, three cost cards to enable this plus one. Just one card for a very solid hammer. You play this in most matchups. Like whenever basically you want to play a shield, and usually you play this shield. So I'm talking Katsu, Lexi, all aggressive matchups, you just play this setup. And then the Rampart is like really only in two matchup. Matchups we play this against Azalea because we try to fatigue her and uh, against Dash because of the interaction with the pistol, they keep breaking the chain and yeah, you basically get six block out of one card with this. So you need this for Dash. Um, other than that, we have a two-handed weapon, the Anathos. This is for quite a decent amount of matchups actually, Uzuri. Bravo, Dromai, and the Mirror. In the Mirror specifically, we combine it with Vambrace, the arm equipment, because you can attack for four, and then like basically represent the six damage of the Vambrace, or Arsenal the card, if they choose to block six. And also it interacts favorably with cards like Crown of Seeds, Peace of Mind, Oasis Respite, stuff like that, right? So it's just a good combo to play in the mirror. But Anathos has some value beyond that. I mean, we also play this against Droma because it's pretty valuable to like Anathos and Mirage for four. Or if you need to kill an Uvia, pay the Vambrace to Anathos and Uvia. You can also red blue pitch. That also works, right? You can pitch a red card first and then a blue card. Attack for six as well. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you think that today uh, you have the last opportunity to play Oldham in this kind of events? Maybe. I don't know. How many points is he off? Does I'm he need to really win? Sure. He needs to win, right? I think he needs to win, yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's uh, literally the best hero to play, but it's like, it's a good one, so it could be. Right. Probably not. Um, anyway, uh, so Anathos, we also played sometimes with Crater Fist in the arms equipment against Bravo again against Suzuri it's like we don't get Vambrace value and we can still do the uh, Anathos for six of the red blue pitch we just can't keep doing that against Bravo specifically the e block equipment is just too valuable to prevent the you know the, the attacks yeah and against Suzuri same thing honestly just like we don't need the Vambrace you can attack for four, attack for six. Just the flexibility of this Anathos in these type of matchups way better than Sledge. Which was like the prior weapon that people used to play. But the release of this card has pushed people into the Anathos with Oldham. Okay, that's that. Then, uh, of course, sometimes in the arms, like the Nurun gloves, it's only for wizards, basically. Yeah? I mean, usually we play the Nurun boots. When we talk like Viserai, Briar, Dromai, yeah, against Dromai we also need AB1 in order to enable uh, at least, we don't need to fatigue Dromai but we usually end up doing it so in order to prevent burn them all damage we need the boots. And the gloves, again Icelander, Kano, Kano is a really bad matchup so it's not gonna help you much but whatever. Uh, Tunic Crown, we always play it. It's the best equipment combo in the game, straight up. Uh, maybe New Horizon. Tunic is the second. Also, 
up there, but it's like tunic, two crown is very strong, tunic, uh, a crown, and then staunching is very strong. We have a card like this in the deck, right? It's just, um, basically, this is, most of the deck is just a Bravo deck. And crown is really what makes you play older. Because uh, Bravo might, like, crippling crush you for 11, and then he draws up four blues, and nothing happens, you know? He can't continue the thing, he's less consistent. Crown really lets you put whatever trash in the arsenal and go off, try to go off next turn again. So, Tunic, incredible, best equipment in the game. Uh, in this deck, particularly good, because you can always make good use out of the Tunic value. You can Tunic to Crown, but We'll get later on to it, we'll actually keep this here, yeah. because Tunic is involved in a lot of play lines that we'll talk about. So for Tunic, uh, I also have the... Legs, yeah, whatever. Yeah, this sure. is just Iron Rod legs. Uh, the reason why we play this over the other Iron Rod uh, equipment, the one where you pay one uh, to block for two, is that we don't want to crown as much in the opponent's turn anymore because of Codex. And because of Embrace. Okay. So Crown actually got really nerfed this set, right? They, they printed a lot of cards that interact favorably into Crown. Codex, mm -hmm. Vembrace. Yeah. So it's not that easy to just Crown, use legs. You just want, rather have the flexibility of the one block whenever you need it. Yeah, yeah that's it. Okay, so now Let's since we, are, we have the tunic here, we can talk about uh, some of the four cost cards that we have here. Yeah. Choke Slam, Endless Winter, and Buckling Blow. So, casting these cards with two blues is really inefficient. Uh, just flow two mana for no reason. So, you don't actually do that that much. You really, with this deck, you block, you defend, you play it patient. And then you use your tunic for one of these attacks. Like you only actually attack with the deck when you are in a good. I mean, either if your opponent didn't do anything, okay, sure, then you attack, or if you have a very efficient play off of two cards. Yeah. Endless Winter is like the most. I guess we all, almost we always run this. It's like very generic. Hits a lot of heroes. Hits Azalea on the uh, opt equipment on the Death Dealer. It's Lexi on the Voltaire. Uh, it's it's good if you uh, watch with this card. Watch out what's the tunic of your opponent doing. Like if the tunic is on two or on three, Endless Winter gets extra value because they will get a frostbite when they activate the tunic. So just pretty good cards, especially Lexi is where we want this. Uh, Choke Slam, just like the next best four cost card to run. Again, it's like a lot of heroes boost their attack. Fi, Lexi, Azalea, you know, Art of War, Premeditate, Lace with Inertia, Lace with Blood Rot, all these cards. Uh, they also don't block well. Like, cards that buff their attack usually are two blocks. So, Choke Slam punishes them for having these cards because they don't have a great choice of either blocking with them or taking the Choke Slam and it prevents the effect. And Buckling Blow, this is like the newest edition, it's a really weird one. Uh, it's not very good, but uh, we combine it with the Buckle for basically Lexi specifically. You can uh, Buckle into Buckling Blow to play the dominated 9 attack, and they don't have like D-Reacts in the deck or anything usually. And you can uh, order the triggers, so you can say, okay, Buckling Bow pl puts a minus one on your horizon, and then I destroy it. So in destroying your horizon, especially if your opponent already has like two cards in the arsenal, very good. You get like basically the command effect, plus the long-term effect of New Horizon being destroyed. And from that point on, you have much more flexibility in the matchup. Like when New Horizon is destroyed, you can fatigue them, because they don't get to do six cards turn anymore, or... Maybe you just kill them as well, because they can't block as well, because they don't get the arsenal cards. It's a lot of things. It's very good. It's hard to do sometimes. Uh, Winter Spite is a card. It's like it, it's not going to work every time. It's basically like Tomel Tie for Dromai, right? It's expensive. You need to take a lot of damage to do it, but if you can pull it off, 
probably win the game. Yeah. In the early game at least. Yeah? Don't do this late. Like if you are 10 live, <laughs> it's uh, not the right time anymore. And I remember we also met in Baltimore for yeah. the Pro Tour. You also played there. Um, yeah. Let's uh, shortly cut on to that because uh, were you also playing this combo there? No, I wasn't. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, was, it would have been good to play it, but it was like a more recent development, the whole... And I wasn't the one to pioneer it or anything. It's just like showed up in London RTN, and since then it's it's uh, gaining popularity with the players. Yeah. yeah. And uh, in Baltimore, what uh, place did you make there? Twelfth place. Twelfth place. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations again. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, this deck quite had uh, changed a little bit from your Baltimore. It deck, did. Right? Yeah, it did. It did. Something's changed. Like yeah. the buckling blow wasn't in there. These cards still were in there. Uh, we'll get to the changes. Yeah. Uh, Buckle wasn't in there, like this combo is new. And then there's some other cards as well. Yeah. Alright, yeah, yeah, let's come to the next card. Uh, one weird thing maybe, there's no Spinal Crush in the deck list. <laughs> this is like the weirdest... Yeah, there's no Spinal Crush in the deck list. Did you cut it out or...? I, I cut it, yeah. yeah. It's not in the deck. So you, have, you played Spinal Crush in Baltimore? I did, yeah. yeah. All right. I did and I cut it now. It's like, it's good into like Fi, but... It usually you take too much damage to do it and it's not worth it anymore. Yeah. Like the tunic to four cost attack or when we get to it the, the gem that we have here, way more efficient, yeah. So you're also running the low cost parts here, I see. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Like you yeah. <laughs> You run the I mean you don't need the gem, it's just in this version particularly it's good because you can gem on one turn, crown, staunch with the gem, and then uh, Choke slam or endless winter without using the tunic, yeah. and then you get to keep the tunic to later on do another one. That's uh, one of the more powerful interactions. Yeah. I was already doing this in Baltimore. In the Baltimore list, it was even better because I played Peace of Mind. Okay. So you could Peace of Mind with this and then do your focus attack without tunic. Yeah. Very good. It's also awkward though, like, yeah, it doesn't block. Sometimes it, it can screw you up. Okay. Anyhow, okay, let's put all this away. Uh, so, if you get to keep your tunic, you might be able to do this combo, right? You grand your, you buy some tempo with like a choke slam, then you get to keep some cards, keep your tunic counter to do the command tunic pummel line. That would be a good place to be. Um, yeah, command is one of the best cards in the game, especially. If you are a hero that wants the opponent to block, right? I just want them to block so I can block better because then I don't have that many cards. I can easier block and then I can threaten them again. Like this is kind of my game plan. It's not the most damage for a card, but it really incentivizes them to block. And Pummel, it's it's only a two of, it's kind of a bad card, honestly. Very overrated card, <laughs> Pummel, yeah, very overrated. Don't get baited into doing the uh, four cost Endless Winter and Pummel too many times. Like this is a very, if you're doing that, you probably already won because it means you have a lot of space. Like the opponent gave you a lot of uh, room to breathe. Right? They, they let you keep four cards to pitch two blues to Endless Winter and Pummel. That's very rare. Usually don't do it. Usually this card is reserved for this card. You know? Tunic, Command, Pummel. This is a combo. Don't, don't get fancy. You know? So do you think uh, that you need CNC to play in a competitive environment or is it possible to play without? It depends what deck you play. Like you can play Lexi without CNC for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, you can play Lexi easily. I, I don't even, in our Lexi deck, I don't even think we run CNC. Yeah. We run like Death Touch and Down and Dirty as poppers and then, yeah. So any deck that plays this primarily as a popper, especially now with the release of Down and Dirty, it's not required. Yeah. But if you, in this deck, you need CNC. It's yeah. like. Yeah, it's part of the whole identity of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah? Sure. It's you cast this card. Yeah. Like if you're not casting this card, you don't need it. If it's just a popper, you don't need it. If yeah. you're casting this card, you need it. Easy as yeah. So uh, what are you doing actually to uh, sustain these kind of decks? Um, I have a friend, they just give me the cards. I'm very privileged in that way. I would buy them if I had to, but... Usually, uh, if you are privileged in living in like some sort of a community where a lot of people play this game, lucky you, maybe you can buy less cards, maybe you can collectively 
collect cards, you know, and share them with each other. Yeah. You know, you might not need like these type of cards, you know, you, you, not everybody needs to own these cards. Like you can be 10 people in your store and one, you own them collectively or so. Yeah, you can try to organize that maybe. Okay, um, then some more reds. We talk about the tech reds basically. We have pulverize. This is, has two functions basically. One of is it's just very good in the mirror and against Bravo. You wanna um, just hit them very hard. It's it doesn't matter that it doesn't have dominate because of all the D reacts. It's just bigger number better. You know, it's very simple. You want the biggest number, and this on it is very crucial as well. Because usually it's just this Anathor, Sledge, blah, 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 they just keep going. And giving it minus four, really crazy. Usually there's only good results. Like either they block it and they don't attack with Sledge, which puts you ahead in the fatigue game as well. Because not attacking means you don't have to block two cards. You get to keep more pile, beneficial. Or if they take it, even better, you get the trigger, you get the damage, amazing. Yeah? Worst case result is, let's say they they have a they play sledge and they have tunic up and they get to like staunch for ten, sink below fourteen exactly, and then still hammer you. That is not the best result. It's a little unfortunate if they have it, but it's like didn't lose you the game either. But it's like yeah. So watch out for that and watch out for opponents playing this card in the mirror as well, because you might need to do stuff like that in order. You might, you can sometimes read, yeah, that the opponent will pulverize you. Sometimes people even heave this. I would be careful with that. Like usually, don't do that unless you know, like against Droma, you can heave this sometimes because they're not gonna disrupt you or anything. They leave you alone. But like, be careful with heave, yeah. And then uh, zealous belting. I run this. I don't run e strike or anything else. Um, this is a very good combo in the mirror and in other matchups where we play the Anathos because it's basically what Bravo does, right? You attack for five and then you attack for six. And against Ultim, for example, if you have Vembrace up as well, very powerful. You attack for 11 and you have Vembrace up, just very good. Also, you can use it to clear dragons. By the way, this is the second pummel target as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can. One of the most powerful plays you can do against like more controlling decks is you can zealous belting, tunic pummel, and then anathos for six. That is very strong. One of the most powerful plays against Roma, against Ultim. If you get to keep cards to do that, you're doing great. Yeah. Doing great. And then defensive cards. We have oh, staunch response. We love defense reactions. Staunch response, um, like one of the better cards in the deck. It blocks for a lot of, <laughs> yeah. And we run it in a decent amount of matchups, like Bravo, Azalea, like any way where you expect the opponent to attack for the amount of damage that this blocks. You don't run it against Roma, you don't run it against like Katsu, Fai, all that stuff, right? Where the attacks are not large enough. Against Lexi, I think it's very interesting. I don't run it right now, but it's uh, debatable whether or not to run it, yeah? Yeah, very good card. And these cards, just very generically good. Sink Below and Fate for Scene, right? A lot of decks run these cards. If you want to block, like why block for three when you can block for four, right? Even get a beneficial effect out of it. Um, we do want to block. The best sort of games are the games where you attack with your attacks and you block with your defense reactions, yeah. right? So, yeah. no. Do, which one of these do you like better, Sink Below or Fate for Sink? This one, yeah. Sink Below. But it's, uh, in Ultim it's like closer than in other decks, I think. Because in, if you're like playing an aggressive deck, Sink Below is way better. Because you might have an awkward hand with Rune Blade, maybe you are missing an attack or a non-attack or whatever. And then sync really, really important, way better. But fate, like since you're playing like more of the long game, you can crown into the opted card. Fate is like it's very close in this thing. Yeah, this is the defense reactions, and then let's talk about some of the uh, more interesting blues. This is all the reds in the deck, by the way. All, all right. the reds, yeah. So now the more interesting blues we have: Tirasunda. 
It's like you cast this when your opponent gives you space to cast it. Just usually this and hammer. Sometimes if your opponent gave you a lot of space, this tunic four cost attack is a play you can do. Uh, really hits Lexi and Azalea well because they run, don't run defense reaction, they don't have equipment block. Sometimes good in the mirror against Bravo with Anathos because you can do this Anathos for seven. If you catch him without Arsenal, for example, could be good. Yeah. Could be good. And then we have two blue staunches here. Also just good card. We only run two because uh, of the interaction with Anathos as well. It's not a three cost. And it's a little awkward sometimes because we don't crown that much anymore. So it sometimes it's like a gem because we don't want to crown and then it's, we don't want to staunch. So, but it really... It's, sometimes it's really good, so you could run 3, 2, 1, it's good in the mirror, good in the bravo, it's like a, it's a good card, I guess, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> uh, Rouse the Ancients is a very important card in the deck, it's like really essential to the uh, plan against Dromai, mirror, like every, where you need to attack, this is like your best pure damage card, you know, doing this for 7, Anathos for 6, 13 damage out of uh, 3 cards, very good rate, right, like, you could be casting Spinal Crush for 9 instead, now you're doing 13, it's way better, you yeah? know, so if, if on it don't matter, I mean, you usually don't cast this against aggressive decks, right, against aggressive decks, hitch this for the hammer, arsenal it and crown it away, try not to block with it if you can avoid it, because it only blocks for 2, yeah. But it's like a sacrifice that we that we make, yeah? yeah. Okay. And then I mean I'm just gonna talk about these blues. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of blue attacks. They're all the same, honestly, it's just the guardian attacks. And uh, we take all of them that have six or more power because of zealous belting. And Rouse, we want highest power, best power, yeah? We don't run Mulch because we only have three Earth cards and all the other Guardian attacks, they're all in here. There's 40 blues in the deck. Yeah, We run Glacial Footsteps, no Ice cards, doesn't matter. It has eight attack, so you can show it with Rouse, you can pitch it for Zealous Belting, it's all that matters. Yeah, Don't overthink it. Okay. And yeah, as, as I talk, the gems, uh, this gem is better against the, it might sound counterintuitive, but this is actually the gem that's better into the aggro matchups, and this is the gem that's like for the mirror and stuff. Where the game goes long and where you can keep pitch, pitching this, you know? Yeah. So, let's, uh, is it the deck? Oh, Earth cards, yeah. yeah. Uh, Autumn's Touch, last uh, blue in the deck. Uh, five attack is good, because five and eight is 13, so it works with rolls. Uh, being able to earth react, especially against like Azalea and stuff, can be very good. It can be good to preserve cards in your deck. You don't do it as much anymore because they embrace again, yeah. But it's like it's pretty free to run and it's a nice option to have. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's it. Yeah. That's the deck. So uh, thank you at first for giving us these insights on your deck. Yeah, no problem. And, uh, I really much remember the first uh, moment that we met because that was yeah. my start in the game. It was the first uh, tournament that I, <laughs> I went got you to. into the game. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> cool. It was uh, right around Aria where Welcome to Race was out of print and we met in Münster. Yeah. And uh, I remember we were talking about Oldham back then too. Like, So you are playing Oldham for a pretty long time now, right? Was it? I, I, was, I was playing Briar before last year's Nationals yeah. and I have been playing old team since last year's nationals basically. Yeah, yeah, that's, right. that's when I started. That's right. So it's actually not. I'm usually like a more aggressive combo player in card games. Yeah. It's a very unusual playstyle for me, but it's been working out. I think it's fun. Like it's not. I, I've never tied a game in old team. <laughs> I never tied a game. Yeah. So no slow play, no nothing. Yeah. yeah. It rarely actually goes to fatigue in a way where it's like. Um, Oh, he just blocked all fatigue and whatever. It's usually fatigue because you force him to block and then you fatigue in the end. But it's like a byproduct of the whole. So I think it's a fun hero. Very good. Has been good for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, how Europe. do you usually test? Like you have a local scene that you test with or also people online? No, only online. I, uh, my local scene is very uh, casual. I love them. Uh, they give me the cards. It's very, they're very supportive of me. But I'm like the only player in my local scene that actually goes to these type of events. So yeah. uh, I have an international testing group. We have uh, Spanish players, German players um, all around the world. Yeah. Test together, figure it out. And yeah, and usually on TTS, not on Talisha. Oh, okay. Don't yeah. play on Talisha. It's just there uh, because of the clicking. You know, you click. It's like um, it incentivizes you to rush your place. I feel like I don't like it. I like to have the experience as a real table. You know. Yeah. And um, I think it's very interesting for me to see you again at this tournament because usually we meet at these big events. We always right? meet, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm always here. <laughs> so you attended like all the big events in the past? All the ones that are like reasonable. Like I didn't go to Singapore calling. I don't go, if it's a calling, I'm not going outside of Europe basically. Uh, but if it's Pro Tour, if it's Worlds, I'll go to the moon. <laughs> it's okay, yeah. And uh, with your testing group, you don't have like a team name or something. You are just testing together, right? No, yeah, we're just testing together. Yes. I mean, we're looking for sponsorship. We can get a team name. Card market, maybe, you know. I have the card market jacket. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we are... Um, it's in the works. Yes, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah. Just win this tournament and then be in a better <laughs> spot to negotiate. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I hope you win one of these tournaments because yeah. you always make such a good effort and also take in so much time. And you also make so good places, right? But yeah. for, for place one... Place one, uh, it's not enough. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've top eight it twice, right? The calling and the battle hardened and now pro tour 12th place. Yeah. It's like, I think I... It's just my place right now. Like I'm not the best player in the world, but I'm like among the top players. I'm in the top tables. I can compete with them. You know, I get to play on stream sometimes, and yeah, I'm. That's just my place right now. I hope I can ascend to the next. I hope for you too. Yeah. So maybe we upload this and you win tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that would be good. Yes. That would be good. I'm down. So, uh, do you have any last words? Do you want to shout out anyone? Nah, I'm good. I <laughs> <laughs> All right. My people know that. They, they'll watch it. They'll know yeah. I, I love them and stuff. It's fine. All right. Thank you so much, Elias. Thank and you. See you next time.